Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here. Thank you for joining us for another Monday Market Update, 9 a.m. Eastern, every Monday morning, coming to you with all the stocks to watch this week, the economic news to highlight. Of course, everyone talking about NVIDIA and those AI stocks. NVIDIA stock, ticker N NVDA, shot up 25% last week alone with nearly 300 million shares traded just over the last three days of the week. That is up to about 10 times the normal daily uh, market. And NVIDIA is actually on track to become the first, the fastest company to a trillion dollar market cap beating out apple for that record with the surge there is no shortage of calls for caution and a bubble in ai stocks could be ready to burst uh, nvidia now trades for listen to this 127 times on a price to earnings basis and 35 times its revenue but we've heard that bubble story before right shares of tesla and amazon were perennially in bubble territory but have rewarded investors with multiples on their money here we see just a five-year chart of tesla up 638 percent just over the last five years and here we see since the ipo on amazon up 3300 percent and of course both these stocks always trading in nosebleed valuations amazon didn't trade under a hundred times price to earnings until 2018 but had grown its share price by by sevenfold in just the five years before that. So how do you keep, how do you avoid missing out on these greatest growth stories while still protecting yourself from those bubbles? How do you buy a stock when it is clearly seems expensive? I'm gonna talk about that, stick around after that though. I'm gonna talk about the stocks I'm watching this week and the economic news you need to be following. Before that, if you've ever wondered what stocks I'm gonna talk about before those videos come out, or if you wanna see the stocks I'm buying and selling in my own portfolio and want that exclusive insider access to the community, I've opened up a new Bowtie Nation community at a special members only area with extra perks and insiders access. I'm gonna put a link to that in the description below. Check that out. We got some loyalty badges, custom emojis that are great in those comments. We're gonna have priority reply to your comments plus the free portfolio tracker spreadsheet. That alone is a $35 value. I'm gonna be doing members only live streams, real time notifications when I buy or sell stocks on stock splits, IPO alerts, and a lot more. So check out that link for that memberships only discount in the, in the description below. Back to today's topic though, and this isn't just about NVIDIA and the current AI stock bubble. This is about all stock bubbles, about all growth stocks and trends. We saw this during the pandemic when stocks shot up to insanely valued levels. How do you buy into some of these growth trends? How do you stay in those growth stocks without getting hit when that bubble pops? Or how do you, how does a value investor get into these growth stocks? So I want to cover this. I shares of nvidia itself are up 172 percent you can see just that huge pop just in the last week alone they continue to climb now yes the company is creating the graphics and the computing sem semiconductors on another level it will clearly lead that ai revolution but when is a stock just too expensive to buy? Shares here trade for a price to sales ratio of 35 times. I know a lot of investors, value investors, won't touch a stock for trading for PE ratio of 35 times. This is price to sales of 35 times. That is more than six times more expensive than shares of advanced micro devices, AMD, at a 5.7 times, which is also trading fairly hot compared to its average multiple. At the heart of this, we can see the valuation history for shares of Nvidia. You see the price to sales up at the top, five year average of 17.5 they're currently about 37 38 times on a price to sales basis but if we scroll back through here through these last 10 years we can see there are several instances that this stock has fallen even even into the single digits as far as price to sell 6.7 back in 2018 10 times 10.8 times in in 2016 in the three years through 2019 it it, it averaged 11.7 times on that price to sales ratio so it is now more than three times more expensive of that it fell to that level averaging just 12.9 times in last year's sell-off so even that is fairly expensive, but the company does have that clear advantage in the growth industry. So I want to give it the benefit of the doubt here and assume that a 12 times price to sales valuation multiple is fair value for this stock. Now, all you out there in the nation know, I usually use a maximum of 10 times price to sales for any stock I'm going to buy. I will not buy a stock that is trading over 10 times on a price to sales valuation. I'm going to talk more about that later on, how it's helped me avoid some of those worst pandemic stocks. But I do agree that, you know, AI is revolutionizing our lives nvidia is going to lead lead that so let's say that that 12 times price to sales multiple is fair value and long-term fair value for the stock now just for an example here for investors to book even a 10 percent annual return on the shares over the next five years and assuming that valuation comes down from that 35x right now to the 12 times fair value 
the company would have to grow sales by 36% a year to 4.7 billion through 2027. Now that actually isn't outside the realm of possibility. Nvidia actually has grown its share, its revenue by 23% over the last four years, 23% an average annual pace. So it would only have to boost that up to 36% a year to meet that 10% return goal for those shares if we assume that it does come down to that 12x value. But now I gotta imagine that the investors buying the stock right now wouldn't be happy with that middling 10% annual return over the next five years, especially given that it's risen 172% just over the last six months. Now for investors to book a 20% annual return on these shares, the company would have to grow sales by 49% a year to $7.25 billion through 2027. And that's a little harder to imagine. But again, you know, I'm the first to admit that this kind of reasoning has caused me to miss out on some of those best growth stories and the best returns in the past. We've talked about shares of Tesla there. They traded at six times on a price to sales ratio in 2013. They've gone up to jump 48 times your money in that period. So starting out fairly expensive there. We talked about shares of Amazon already traded at a PE ratio of above 100 times price to earnings there, but have returned nine times your money over the last decade. Buying into these growth stories has always been really the biggest hurdle for value investors like myself and often the biggest regret but it can also save us from some of the worst losses in the market you know by avoiding those potentially bubble territory stocks i didn't invest in zoom seen here when it surged to 560 dollars a share it's about 268 times on a price to sell basis in 2020 and I avoided that 88% loss. Even in some of the stocks I do now own, one of my favorite growth stocks here, Teladoc Health, ticker TDOC, I avoided that thing like the plague back in 2020 at its peak of $300 a share when it was trading for 45 times on a price to sales basis, and it's lost 93% of its value. Now, I did start buying this last year, and while my average cost of about $32 a share right now it is above the current price, it's still only 2.1 times this year's this year sales. So a price to sales ratio of 2.1 times and the positive return is coming for this. Now, unfortunately, there really is no easy answer to this. I'm gonna show you a better measure to, that's gonna incorporate growth into valuation next, but a lot of this just comes down to understanding what type of investor you are and being comfortable with that. For a value investor, you gotta be ready to miss out on some of these hot stocks, some of these growth stories in exchange for lower volatility. Okay, not having to sit through that painful crash, like just the 63% drop in shares Nvidia went through itself just to, to from 2021 to September of last year. Okay, you can still get solid market returns and a whole lot less stress. Even for growth investors though, it still helps to have a maximum you're gonna pay on that valuation basis. Some of those investors willing to pay any price during the pandemic for a stock may never see those highs in stocks like Peloton and Zoom again. You know, I usually have drawn a line in the sand at about 10 times on that price to revenue basis, but you could make the case even for 15 or 20 times for some of these biggest growth trends like, like Nvidia, like Tesla, like Amazon in the past. So you don't miss out on those, but you still set kind of a limit for how much you're gonna pay. This is gonna allow you to really follow some of the most expensive stocks, but help you avoid the biggest losses as well. Another measure you can use though when you're investing in these expensive growth stocks though is the price to earnings to growth ratio or the PEG ratio. This can be used useful in accounting for that growth in valuation. For example, if we add up the earnings for Nvidia over the last year, these per share earnings and divide the price into that, we see that Nvidia is trading for 127 times on a price to earnings basis and just looks absolutely ridiculous. But if we go here to the analysis tab, we can see earnings estimates for Nvidia. We see through 2025, the company is expected to post $8.96 in per share earnings. That would be from $3.34 over the last year. So if we divide that, $8.96 divided by 3.34, and that's a two year estimate, so 0.5, we got a 63.7% increase in earnings over those two years. So expected earnings growth of 64% over the two years through 2025. So then using this price to earnings to growth or the PEG ratio, we take that 127 times PE ratio. So price to earnings over growth, 127 times PE ratio divided by 64. 
it gives us a 1.98, almost a two times price to earnings ratio. Now, of course, that's still twice the value I like to see in these growth stocks. That peg ratio of 1.0 or less in a PE to growth ratio tells me that these growth stocks are priced a little bit more reasonably considering their growth. So it doesn't quite let Nvidia off the hook just yet. Okay, they are still twice as expensive as what I usually like to see in growth stocks, but it still does have that growth. Of course, you have to still be able to assume that that earnings growth is going to continue on that pace to, to really justify that current share price. And, and that's what's in doubt. I mean, can it grow its, its earnings by 64% a year over the next two years and even more beyond that? Nation, it takes discipline to zone out some of the noise and the hype you see in the markets and just invest according to your own research and your own investing style. If you are a value, value investor, just be comfortable with that. Know that you're going to miss out on some of these high flying, hot stocks like Nvidia, like Tesla, like Amazon, and be comfortable with that because you're going to have lower volatility. You're not going to have to sit through the crashes when those bubbles do burst. If you're a growth investor, use something like the PEG ratio to know you're getting a little bit better valuation. Do your own research into these and be comfortable with that roller coaster ride if you do feel that you're going to get the higher returns in the future. Now I want to highlight some of the stocks I'm watching, the economic news coming out this week. First up, C3.ai, that's ticker AI, going to be reporting its earnings on Wednesday with the stock fully benefiting from this AI frenzy and rising three-fold since just January and near its 52-week high. Now I expect management to really be a cheerleader to that AI enthusiasm, but I am worried about valuation here a little bit at that 14 times the price to 2023 sales ratio. So again, this one trading for 14 times that price to sales ratio. I do own the shares here, but I did sell those covered calls at a $40 strike price back when they hit that early April peak. VMware, ticker VMW, going to be reporting its earnings on Thursday with the shares really stuck in a range here on its delayed acquisition by Broadcom. Okay, Broadcom did announce an agreed acquisition for $60 billion. It's just above the $57 billion market cap we see in VMware right now. Now, the EU and the UK have sounded negative on this deal and have extended their timeline for a review. I think this could be a win-win scenario, though, for VMW investors. Okay, if the acquisition is allowed at that $60 billion price, that would mean a very quick, easy 5% pop in these shares. If not, though, if this acquisition is uh, is called off because of regulatory approval, shares of VMW look attractively priced at just four times revenue and, and sales growth of 7% a year. Next year, we have Salesforce Inc. Ticker CRM is also going to be reporting its earnings on Wednesday with expectations for the company to report a 64% earnings growth to $1.61 a share for the quarter. Enthusiasm for all things AI has also helped push this stock back up 60% so far this year, but this could still have some good long-term value with the shares trading just six times expected 2023 revenue. So price to sales just six times here, quite a bit lower than some of these other AI stocks we're seeing. I expect the company to focus on those AI products and really increase the outlook for its full year sales. What really got my attention was just three of the 11 stock sectors closed higher last week and we had a clear display of weakness in the market. Beyond those, just those three sectors in the green here, all other sectors were down more than 1%, with stocks in four sectors down more than 2%. It was only that massive 4.6% jump in tech stocks that really saved the overall market index from falling for the week. Okay, the tech sector alone accounts for 26% of the S&P 500, which means without tech stocks last week, the market would have been down nearly a percent. Now, the problem here is that leadership by just a few or one sector is not a sign of a healthy market. The fact that stocks in eight of the 11 sectors fell last week should be a clue into really weakness overall in the economy, investor sentiment, and both. And here, zooming out to the year to date really shows that problem even more clearly. Just three sectors here are posting gains for the year. Technology is up 32%, uh, communication services up 30%, and consumer discretionary stocks 18%. Now, these three sectors account for all of that 9.5% gain in the, in the S&P 500, while, while the other eight sectors have lost an average of 4.6% so far this year. You can see utilities here is down 8.5%. Real estate's down 3.3%. They're down on that increase in interest rates, really pulling investors, those yield-searching investors, away into bonds, away from those dividend stocks. Energy is down 10% here on lower, lower oil prices, while, while financials are down on that banking crisis. Even healthcare stocks are down 6% on a weakness in pharmaceuticals and biotech. So really, enthusiasm for that AI and social media stocks can only carry the market for so long. Either leadership has to extend into other parts of the market, or weakness is going to creep into those outperforming sectors, and the entire market is going to fall. 
And it's a pretty slow news week until we get to Friday of this week that, with that monthly jobs report. Now, the U.S. is expected to have added just 188,000 jobs in the last month. That would be versus 253,000 jobs reported in the prior month. The unemployment rate is expected to increase just by 0.1% to 3.5%, while hourly wages are expected to stay pretty elevated at 4.4% year-over-year growth. Now, a report under that 200,000 jobs added would help show the labor market is cooling a little bit and give the Fed a little bit more reason to pause its interest rate hikes for its next meeting here in June. But what really surprised me here was for last Friday's PCE, the Personal Consumption Expenditures Report, I think investors took their eyes off that inflation ball. Yeah, if you didn't see that, the PCE inflation measure came in higher than expected last Friday. Core prices rose 4.7% from, from a year ago. That would be about 0.1% higher than expected, while that 0.4% month-over-month increase was also higher than forecast. And while consumer spending did also come in surprisingly strong, inflation is just way too high for the Fed to pause or stop its interest rate hikes. In fact, if we look here at the CME Fed watch hole, it shows market expectations for what the Fed is going to do at its next Next meeting. You scroll down here, you can see this next meeting here in 14th of June, just in about 16 days here, 16 days, 17 hours to be exact. Uh, you can see here the current target rate is 5 to 5.25. Okay, so 5% to 5 and a quarter percent. We can now see that the market expects a 65% chance that the Fed will actually raise rates again in June. That would be a huge hit to that pivot argument. Investors that were hoping that the Fed was going to pivot pause its interest rate hikes and not in increase interest rates. Eventually, later on during this year, lower interest rates. That is coming under pressure with these higher inflation rates or higher inflation reports that we're seeing, like the PCE report last Friday. We see here that 65% market expectation that the Fed will raise its interest rate yet again here in June. That was just 23%. That was just 17% one week ago, 23% last month, 17% just a week ago, risen now to 65% after those higher than expected PCE inflation report. So we are starting to see that key support for stocks, that Fed pivot argument that the Fed is done raising interest rates come under pressure over the next few weeks after that enthusiasm for a debt ceiling deal is, is comes out of the market. I think we get back to the focus focus on inflation and back to Fed rates. If the Fed does pause here in June, I think it's very likely that they are going to be adamant. They are going to be clear that rate hikes are still in the cards for July. And I think that's going to weigh on stocks. So it could be a very rough stock market over the next few weeks and over the next couple of months still. Check out that members only perks and exclusive access with the link I'll leave in the description below. Or click on the video to the right for the seven stocks that will pay your mortgage. Seven monthly dividend stocks that will put a roof over your head. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.